Hi everyone, welcome to another edition of Ask Jim on this chilly uh, Wednesday night out here in Maroolbark. So what we do is we did a podcast the other day, Jim, or a video announcement, I shouldn't call it a podcast, about the yeah. COVID-19. It's had around 1,500 views. Yes. Um, just to let people know that the link was legitimate, it wasn't spam. We just thought that would it would be better because when we try to embed it in the email, the image goes away and you have to right-click the download. Yeah. So we thought we'd get more hits, but um, it's been well received, so thank you for that. Yeah, I've had a few quite a few people come back to me, which is nice. Yeah, which is good. We always get asked for more communication, so we're trying to do as much communication as we can. Yeah. The Chris is going, where's Jim? Jim is over there on my my side over there. So let's get into it. So we had a few questions Who's come saying to, where's Jim? Some guy called Chris on the thing saying, where's Jim? This is Jim here. He me, might be a new me. guy watching. I haven't got a beard, Chris, but it's me. Things a new customer watching. All right, so here we go. Um, we've got a few suggestions that come through during the week. I want to read them out because they're, they're quite interesting. Yes. So this is one which is from Derek Spice from Jim's Mowing. Mm -hmm. And he's saying that what he does at the moment, he actually sends out a text the night before a mow. So he's a mower. This could go for anyone, though. They're asking older customers and self-isolated people, is there anything we can grab them by shopping? If they say yes, and some of them have, they grab the shopping, leave it at the door, and they deposit money along with the mow. So that's not a bad little way, a little yeah. bit of an extra. Do you need anything on the way from the shops? So absolutely, that could be that could be for any division. It could be for anyone: dog wash, cleaning, mowing. Does he charge for it? Um, no, he doesn't. This guy doesn't. But I'm presuming you could if you wanted to. So there's a few other initiatives going on from franchisees as well. I know there's a one um, down in Gippsland, which is the home watch stuff. Mm. The little holiday homes and saying yes. they'll check all the locks and all that sort of stuff as well. It's quite a good, quite good money the way they've done it too. Yes, it is. So we've got 224 people watching now, which is great too, Jim. So that's our record. So I don't know what's 326 now. So I don't know what's happened, but <laughs> it's great. So 326 people watching now. And I also want to mention last week as well. We got that positive email during the week, which we're getting a lot of. Um, we're getting some feedback, which is great. So Joel Ryan, who's a Jim's Mine franchisee, last week offered his equipment um, to to a, for a franchisee's in test and tag to use to take some unserviced work. So a franchisee called Justin Kurzlake, who's test and tag. Let us know about. Let us know that Joel lent him all this gear. Yeah. He's been giving him jobs, all the help, and Joel wanted no nothing, money, no nothing in return. Which is wonderful. So a big shout out to Joel Ryan from Jim's Mowing up in Canberra. Well done, Joel. That's, that's and, fantastic. Um, I mean, that really come off well. And and some of these guys are really hurting, particularly test and tag and building inspections. They're the two divisions that have been most hammered by this. So it's it's great what you've done for him. We really appreciate that. I really appreciate that, Joel. And I know that's been a concern a lot of people when you mm. say that across divisional work is they go, well, I don't have the money to buy the equipment to do the work. So if there are any franchisees who can help out and offer their gear, mm. um, that'd be great. So really thanks to Joel, Ron and Joel and Justin. That's good to hear some positive news as well during, <laughs> during these times. Well, actually, speaking of cross divisional work, we probably should talk about what happened today. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we decided to, everybody who's down for unserviced leads in there, in their territory, in their region, we decided to let them have all the unserviced leads from any division. Yep. Now, unfortunately, we didn't quite realize how many there'd be and they got hammered by it, so we had to pull that back. But we are gonna make it so that um, within a few days, we're gonna make it so that a franchisee wishes to, they can at least get emailed any unserviced leads in their area. And if they like the look of them, they can contact me have them put on their system and then go and grab them from the client. At least they know what, what's going on and what's around. There we go, so 254 people tuning in, which is great. So please leave a comment on the Jim's Group live feed and we can see that in real time. If you're watching via the other pages, we can't see it in real time. Jack will filter them through. Okay, so go to um, Shiley Copley, who's tuning in from Jim's Cleaning, so g'day. Dave McDonald's saying the internet better not break. I know a guy that does, he can help you out. <laughs> and Shane Austin's gone, please start Jim's Home Fresh in Sydney. Now, the reason why this has come yeah, up is I because... Just, I just spoke to Shane, I just emailed Shanker today and I said, can you, how can you do this? Can we can we spread it? I said, let me approach the franchisees and the franchisors and, and see if he's interested. And, and he said, well, you, what you need is a warehouse. Mm. You've got to have somewhere where you've got to bring the fruit and the veg and the products too to take out. So he's talked to people in the industry, but that's... So unless someone's got a warehouse sitting around idle, it's probably going to be hard to do anything with it right now. But we'd love to do it in the state. It's been fantastic. About $150,000 in a week. And just let people know, you were on the radio in Perth today on 6PR. They called at 9am and we, we rang you at 9.15 and got you on. And that was, Home Fresh was one of them you were asked about, plus mowing and cleaning all the yeah, other yeah, services yeah, as well. Yeah. So around 10 minute segment as well, which we'll post the other day. And that was due to them watching the Facebook Live stuff and knowing you're accessible, which is great as well. So 6PR Perth, if you want to hear that as well. So if Hader said, wow, so many people watching. Maybe Hader helped us out and emailed all these connections again, but we had a massive number, it's up to 200 still. The James Mitchell saying, Jimmy from the Iron Line guy, he said, g'day guys. So please leave a comment or question in there, we'll get to him. So a comment I had last week on the live feed, which I didn't get out, which is actually non-COVID-19 related for once. Wow. It was from a guy called Adam. It says, hi Jim, I read your book a while ago and really enjoyed it. Do you have any new research projects? Well, we're, we're working on it. The trouble is, right at the moment, all the medical space, all the labs have been taken over by the medical people, so we can't get our experiments done. But we've got some really exciting stuff going. We have a um, 
one implication of part of my research is they can actually slow down aging to some extent and have some, some very good effects. So we want to experiment, do some tests over the next year to, to test on that. Yeah, so that's pretty important. So all the, um, do you know if that's a fact, all the research and labs in facilities in Victoria, for example, have they been sequestered by the government or something? Or has uh, I think some of them have been taken up by the yeah. government, other ones that the staff just aren't coming in. Right. We just can't get access to labs for the time being. Okay. We've got arrangements with the Trobe University and we're talking to people in Sydney about, about lab space. There we go. Because you can't, you can't do these kind of things in, in, in your garage anymore. <laughs> You've got to have a proper lab. We've got 200 people watching now, which is great. So please leave a comment or question, especially in the Jim's Group head office page, so I can see it in real time and read you out. And we've got one here from um, Vic Have Cool, a room for free. So that's from a comment there. I don't know if that's in relation to... You have a cool room? Yeah, someone's saying, David Gazilla saying, have cool, a room free. I don't know what that one's in relation D- to. No, no, I'd be talking about, about home fresh. David, send me an email, jim at jims.net. Right. And I'll put you in touch with um, with Shanka and, and we'll see if we can do something with it because it's an incredible time to... Launch that business. It's it's gone through the roof. Oh, it's been they can't believe it. They've got people ordering four hundred dollars, five hundred dollars worth of fruit and veg, and they say, "How can you? How can you eat that much? Mm. What, what are they doing?" So it's it's amazing. You've never seen anything like it. It's very working. So here's a question from Dan Laycock: If a test and tag franchisee gets any regular clients for mowing, do they keep them when things yeah, go back to normal, or can they only take them temporarily? No, no, they belong to you. They're, they're absolutely your clients as long as you want. You can actually sell the rights to them if you wish. Back to somebody in mowing if you want to, but it's so Darren's a mowing franchisor, I think, in New Zealand. So he's asking yes, a question. Well, if the test and tag guys take your jobs, it's the same principle as if if you've got a territory, you don't take a job in territory. Somebody comes in and takes the, the work in your territory. It belongs to them. It belongs to the franchisee. That's actually in the contract. We cannot take a job off of them. A franchisee without their consent. Well, well that's the customer asks us to. Well, I could imagine when things go out to normal, someone's going to do half and half. I don't know if you could imagine that. No. I don't know if I would. That well, that, I, I doubt they'd want to. I think test and tag guys, once they get back on their feet, they probably won't want to. I hope they'll actually, they've got some good clients, they'll pass them back to the mowing guys. And this is this is extra business we've got. And yeah, the answer is probably, we don't, we don't really know, Darren, it necessarily if that will happen, but we'll have to do it for the guess of it. It's been completely time. unprecedented. We've never had this in the past, but, you know... Unserviced leads are a problem for us. I mean, mm. we, we were close to a third of our, our lead, leads were unserviced before the crisis hit, so that was that was bad. That's not a good thing for clients. And if we can get franchises from other divisions to cover them temporarily, how good is that? Mm. Now, Chris theme is going, is there Jim's merchandise? 100% there's Jim's merchandise, so T-shirts and yeah. bears. That's, we that, have, that's national office. We've got a heap of these bears back in stock now, actually. It's got around 120, so... We've got some more in, did we? We've had franchisees ordering a box. Yeah, we have one guy ordered 25 to give to clients. Oh, as an, Or real estate agent, sorry. So we drop in there. So yeah. there's bears there. They're fairly, they're fairly competitive. Then Joel Ryan's comedy. Thanks, guys. Anything I can do uh, to help and appreciate your reconciliation. Uh, your, you're, you're a good acknowledgement. Man, Joel. We really appreciate really it. Really nice, Joel. We appreciate it. I, I love it when people help each other. It makes me feel very, very warm when they hear any story about franchisees just doing something for somebody else, even somebody they don't know from another division. That, that's very heartwarming. Let us know because um, I know Jim's getting smashed with probably more, more negative than positive things at the moment. So yeah, I love that. Kind and of yourself. Stuff. So let us know. Eric Jergens has gone. Hi, guys. Great to see that when there's nothing to do, heaps of people are tuning in. Maybe an opening for Jim's TV. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, thanks, Eric. Nothing to do, so you might as well look at me talking. That's that's, that's real. <laughs> We're extra law viewer every Wednesday, so it's probably for other people. But um, <laughs> I don't. I think I think we'd run out of segments, Eric. I don't know what we could else could do. It'd probably be interesting. Someone's gone. Oh, Netflix series, Eric. Yeah. Could you do a Netflix series? All right, let's keep going down here. So Shane Chantrum, thanks for the chat on the phone today. It's oh, yeah. always great to get your perspective on life. And Shane's a franchise also. You did have a chat to a franchise also, which is great. Yeah. Letting you know. As I keep on saying everybody, I'm, I'm always available. I, I, I do very little around here. Everybody else does all the hard work. And I'm just there to talk to franchisees and franchisors who've got any issues. Got 200 people watching now, so make sure you leave a comment in the Jim's Group live feed if possible. And Jake will scan the other ones in the background. Eric Jurgens gone. Joel, in the past, you've not been a fan of the Prime Minister. I'd love to hear your thoughts on how you think he's been. I think he's been fantastic, Eric. I think he's been yeah. brilliant. And I've said this to Jim actually. I said in the end of the bush, well, I think too well my opinion, but I think he's been brilliant, and I think um, no one could do that job better than what he's doing. I think doing he's done a good job, and I like the way he's got all the premiers on. Side. All the premiers as well have been it's, doing great. If you compare the way Australia's hit this crisis compared with someone like the US, it's or Italy or lots of other places, we've done incredibly well. I, I think we've done as well as anybody. I mean, you look at New Zealand; that was a unified response because they've only got you know less government than we do, but they locked down the whole country, including yep. mine contractors. I mean, that makes no sense. How does it make a company safer when a guy stays at home instead of going out mowing lawns? You cannot get infected mowing lawns. 
That annoyed me actually. So I think I think our government's done a pretty good job overall. No, I think they've I been agree. great. Plus, with all the premiers as well, I yes. think we we're lucky with um, very very unified sort of effort compared to America or something like that. It's yeah. been pretty. And we're doing well. We're testing as much as anybody in the world, at, which is the, the great way to keep on top of this thing. We're testing a lot of people, ninety eight percent or not, and the and the infections are coming down. I think they're doing well. I mean, I just well, I know. As I said, I'm expecting it to ease with time. I think by May we're going to see things coming a little bit more back towards normal. I hope so. I hope the customer, cons- the consumer confidence as well comes back. I think that's the important thing. Yeah. In the economy and all that sort of but stuff. But there is people talking about what, what what they'll do is they'll gradually let the let it get into the into the into society because lockdown can't continue forever. But in a, in a slow enough way so that we've got plenty of emergency beds and ventilators and so forth, which of course they're they're stocking up on, mm. so that you don't have people dying unnecessarily. You know. So it's a terrible thing, but you can't you can't put your economy on ice indefinitely. Definitely. And Brett, let's go on with a comment here. Just I think Brett's antennas all test and tag. Um, don't harm me. So that just wants to say that I pushed hard in my area and my previous clients in March, and I had the busiest March in five years, and I'm still taking bookings until the end of April. Wow. I've been in business since 2001, and so termite and pest control is franchisee right. since 2014. Good time to be creative with what you offer. I'm happy to assist any new guys. It's a great offer, Brett. It's quite noticeable, actually. You've got some people saying cleaning is one example where you've got people who are very short of work. And others who are saying they're absolutely flat out. Often it depends on how you approach your clients, what you're sending to them, what you're saying to them. Yeah, we've had some really creative franchisees. It's been awesome to see what they've done, and yeah. it's been really cool. Steve Durant's going, G'day, guys. Great work by everyone. It's just an idea as I'll be doing the training online, like many others, is we come down to Melbourne once things improve to see the call center and meet Jim. We'd love you to do that. 100%. We, so you can do that. We'd love you to come. I wish franchises would come here more often, actually. It was great to, to just to see you and show you around the place. So absolutely, Steve. So you can come yeah. down any time. Just give Jim, maybe Jim an email, a heads up before to make sure he's here. Yeah, the only reason, yeah, that's the only reason. Yeah. I never, never mind, nobody ever minds you dropping in. You'd be, always be welcome. Any franchisee, any franchise is always welcome any time, except that, you know, I might not be here. If, yeah. if, that's, if, that's, if that matters. Just to check his movements, Steve. So you're more than welcome to come down and Jim would love to but meet usually you. usually I'm here or I work from home, which is next door. That's so. it. And he's saying he's also doing a certificate in four and building some construction to help with your fence franchise. That's awesome. Wow. We have handyman franchisees doing the Cert 4, a lot of them are chippies as well. Mm. A lot of customers who are watching don't realise, but a lot of the, let's say, handyman guys are all former builders or they are builders, building mm. inspection guys. Most of them used to be former builders. So really high quality um, experts they get. The Michelle's gone here. Just wondering what's happening around Australia with the gyms mowing. We are still operating in Queensland. So what's happening yeah, in the rest no, of us? No, we're doing well. I mean, there's a little bit of a drop down in work, but the mo- majority of mowing people are completely flat out, as far as I can tell. Mm. Um, we've still got we've still got a lot of unserviced leads, actually. Which is, um, a lot of them, are, more of them are going unser- are going to other divisions now, which is good. But of course, mowing always gets pre- preference. Mm. But so, <laughs> I know franchisors complain about, and they say, "Well, you're taking uh, guttering jobs." But I say, "But you don't do them. Get get your guys to cover all your jobs, and there's no nobody else is going to take them." Yeah, and make sure, but we do want to make sure anyone takes guttering jobs has certificates on all the insurances yeah, and stuff like that. And we're all proper harness and all the rest of it, so that that's it. safe. But but we want these jobs done. That's and, it. And guttering is good money, actually. That's it. But make sure you do the license and all sort of stuff. Now, Chris Thum is gone. Jim is the best. So someone's saying you're the best, Jim, which is Chris from a member of the public, which is awesome. Thank you. Okay, Giassi, uh, who? Which Jim's internet memes do you like the best? Jim's partying, Jim's gyms, or Jim's cloning? Question mark. Which one of those three? <laughs> Personally, um, Jim's cloning sounds pretty good. I oh, know you'd be like the Jim's cloning for your science sort of stuff. So I think, I think cloning's a, a nice idea. One hundred percent. You want to clone yourself, Jim? How many clones uh, do you reckon we enough? Think, How many can we handle? I think, I think one of me is probably already too many. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think, be much I don't think we can handle too many. I don't think we enough of vote for that one. <laughs> <laughs> could handle too many. Yeah, David, run fire, Jim and Joel, David from tuning in, which is great. Okay. People are commenting, awesome. Leave a comment. We'll read it out. Dave, Brian, will unserviced leads be offered up first for the appropriate divisions prior to going to other divisions? Uh, of course, but, but uh, sorry, when you say unserviced leads, if they're unserviced by definition, they're up for grabs. Yep. If you say no to them, but if you, if you come in to take a lead, it goes territory, same region, different region, same division, other divisions, gyms plus. That's the order. It always goes to, to you first. So if you say no to a job because you don't want it, then somebody else can take it. And, 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 then, and basically, too, when a job goes unserviced, you don't want to wait too long because the client's already been told you can't, you can't, you can't we can't help you. Yeah. So if you wait for an hour and a half, almost certain they rung somebody else. But if you can jump on them in, in five minutes, you say, look, actually, I can't help you. Well, then you've got a good chance of landing it. 
Yeah, make sure, yeah, make sure your net's cast wide and all that sort of stuff and, yeah. and get put down for whatever you need. Well, Great. when you've got this thing going so that you can actually get an email, like, presumably in, in a few days of any unserviced lead from anywhere, you can actually react fairly quickly. If you keep an eye on your emails and jump on it, and then you can go and actually take the job. But even if you don't, it tells you what's available and what's going around. So you reckon that will be available a couple of days or next week? In a few days. In a few just days. Said, you just said a couple of days of programming. But okay. So I'd say probably Tuesday next week because obviously that's the official. I'd say most likely. I'm, I'm hoping so. Yeah. The way we handled it probably wasn't wasn't ideal, but I think the principle of the intention was good. The intention was good. Yeah, because I'm I'm just I know most people are doing well, but you can't help feeling with the people who aren't. And, and I do talk to these people a lot. And that's what prompted the whole thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I see some of the individuals like Test and Tag, and they're and they're brilliant operators, and they just got no work. And it's not their fault. There's nothing they can do. So. I just really, really want to do something to help. So sometimes I probably... Jump, jump the gun a bit, but that's all right. The, we'll, jump the gun. It's a good change. We'll be done properly next week, which would be great. Graham Horfbach's gone, pest control is up. Everyone looking for termites in their gardens at the yeah. moment. Yeah. Pest control has been one that's booming, actually, when I've been looking online. Yes, it is. It's it's, it's going, going well. well. We're doing, we're doing yeah. okay. Actually, I've been hearing back from people who've been doing some of this cross-divisional work, and they're, and they're really happy. They've got extra money coming through, and it's, it's making a, a big difference to them. The cross divisional stuff. Yeah. Okay. They, they really, they really love it. They said it's fantastic. This is extra income when they didn't have it, and hey. it's one stage where having fifty different divisions really pays off. Now, just a question for me: If a customer gets a, someone from another division, are they going to go out in the same uniform, or how does that all work? Oh yeah, they go out in their own uniform. That's quite own legitimate. Uniform. Right. If you're a test and tag person, you're doing a mowing job. You go out in test and tag uniform, and you use test and tag stationery. You just explain to the client what's going on. Yeah. And the customers, and obviously the client should be confident that that person yeah, can well, do the job. Yeah, it's still gyms. Correct. You're still legitimately gyms. Right. That, that's considered to be in uniform. And then here we go. David's going, because my family business, I used to growing China veggie to Vic Market. They used to deliver 30 years ago, sadly closed down. Three fudge, oh, they've got three fudge, fridge trucks for sale. Sorry, I said fudge trucks. F three fridge trucks for sale. So just email. Again, email. HomeFresh, yeah. Yeah, well, you, you can go to HomeFresh direct if yeah, you like. Probably HomeFresh for that one because I would have use for that. Probably not anyone at the moment. Well, so. you can just go to me and I'll pass you through. There we go. Matt Tapley, do you feel the lawn mowing contractors need to wear a mask to do the role under COVID-19 conditions? Matt Tapley, good question. Do the, do the which? So do you feel the lawn mowing contractors or franchisees need to wear a mask to do the role under COVID-19 no. conditions? Everything I've read about is that masks don't really have much of an effect. Yeah, it's an interesting one, isn't it? There's a lot of they, people... They actually yeah. say that wearing a mask can be a health hazard because what happens is you're wearing a mask and it gets sort of itchy and you touch your face. And that's, that's the classic thing of, of catching it. So in actual fact, it may actually make you less, less safe. So we don't talk about a mask. The point of it is when you're mowing lawns or pool care or anything outside at all, how can you possibly infect somebody if you don't actually meet them? It's quite possible to do the whole job and everything. And you can even, you can even phone your client in doors and talk to them about what they need to be done. And all the payment is electronic and the quoting is electronic. There's no real reason why you need to actually be close to anybody. And you don't even touch the same surfaces because, I mean, you're talking about grass and stuff. And the ones that do have to go inside, they take a lot of precautions necessary as well, like your yeah. antennas or your cleaning. And so if you, you need to go inside, well, antennas is mainly going to be on the roof, but they need to put their points in. So they're just, you're just super careful. You don't go in the same room. You maintain personal distance. Mm. But the risk of our people getting getting sick from, from their job is fairly minimal if you take sensible precautions. And, do, and Matt, we have, I have seen some photos of franchisees taking photos of themselves with masks and stuff on, so there's some, mm. there's some Look, protective if, if measures it, as well. If it makes the depending. clients feel better, then do it, I would say. Yeah. I just don't think masks, from what I've read, are particularly helpful. But things like proper personal distance, like, like here, yep. not, not that I'm, I'm quite happy to stay away from this guy anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. That, yeah. that sort of thing is, is if, you, if you're sensible about this kind of thing, at the moment, chances of infection are quite low. Yeah, and if you're watching this as a customer, just know our guys and, mm. and girls are taking all the precautions necessary. They're, they're we, we do a lot of training and stuff, and we encourage them to do these online courses too, which you can, yeah. which you can get done. And their regionals and their divisionals are giving them heaps of information and stuff like that. So there's a lot of stuff if you're a customer to be confident. I don't know if any gyms franchisee has got sick with this yet. We've heard of nothing yet. so Nothing we've heard of. Yeah. I know people have, have suspended for various reasons, Mm. Um, like somebody who's got to stay home to look after a, a you know child who's not at school and somebody else has got an aged parent or something like that. But I've never heard of any of our franchisees, nearly 4,000, actually being sick themselves. But, and it's probably because we are a fairly low-risk sort of sort of group. Okay, let's, see. let's get some comments here. There's heaps of comments now, which is great. Sharon Connell's gone, hi, Jim and Joel. Great work on the communication to everyone. Thank you so much. You're welcome, Sharon. Thanks, Sharon. And thank you for leaving that nice comment. It's good to just leave a nice comment every now and again. <laughs> Denise Taylor, first week's the franchisee in the Sunshine Coast, and we are having a great first week and loving it. Really? That's fantastic. In, in mowing? 
Uh, let us know what division you are, Denise. Yes. Maybe if it's mine or any, anyone else, please let us know. Then Daniel Earth has gone, are you on the Northern Beaches, Sydney? There'd absolutely be franchisees up on the Northern Be- yeah, Beaches, Sydney. Absolutely, we are, yes. So Jim's.net's look at all the services and there'll be franchisees there who will be able to help you out. Now here's a non-COVID question. Dave McDonald, do you think we should start manufacturing back up and get rid of free trade agreements, taxing imports to offset manufacturing? Very technical question. Good yeah. one. Uh, look, I don't know about everything. It's interesting what you're talking about. If you're talking about something like clothing or footwear, I really don't think it matters too much if you get that out of China and really, really cheap. But when it comes to medical gears and, and medicines and, you know, certain mechanical things and so forth, I think it's very dangerous to be totally dependent on China. And I think it will change. I don't think people will be so confident about, about it'll always be free trade and goods will always flow after this crisis. I think countries can become very more patriotic I would like to see in, 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 a, in, a, in a directed way, I, I hope and I think we will get to the stage where there is a lot more manufacturing brought back into this country. And we've got some good workers here too. But do you think Australians will pay for that extra increase? That's the problem. Well, I think we need to. The, the trouble with it is you've, you've got, to, um, you've got to, to balance the fact that um, you might save yourself a few bucks on something, mm. but if, if the um, supply is cut out in an emergency, then, then you, you, some in your family might die. You've got to balance you know, money against health, which is of course what you do in this sort of crisis anyway. So I really, I really think that having a bit more local self-sufficiency is good. I've actually got a vehicle on my farm, which is a small off-road vehicle, which is actually manufactured in Australia. They don't make cars, but they make these off-road vehicles. Okay. So it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing. It's very, very rugged and it's got very high wheelbase and stuff, and we charge all over the farm on it. Mm. Well, I hope Aussies pay a bit more. You know, milk, milk for me is a big one, being from a dairy farmer family was the dollar milk and stuff like that and people just wouldn't want to pay the extra and i was and they were going we should support the farmers well the consumer wasn't supporting yeah. the farmers so yeah, the farmers are support the consumers i, like I mean support the, the I like, australian I like, product i like to support the farmers i guess so support the australian product. i don't think we import much milk anyway so it's not really that's not really an issue mm-hmm. um so, but, so, but, but a bit more local would be good i reckon and i think i think australia and the world will be changed out of all this i really do we, we're going to go back to normal it might be the same normal again i think jim's been an australian company as well and people know that it's mm. not from private equity owner or anything like that it's owned mm. by you and australian so 100 owned by that's australian it. that's me there we go so tim baker did we all yeah, just in full disclosure we read everything out the system let me down and i'll be paying it off debt for 20 years that's a question we've had comment just come through then on another thing so maybe yeah. as a former franchisee i'm sorry to hear that yeah. Let's let us know. Not everybody succeeds yeah. in gyms. Well, all we can say is the the stats are there. If you go into business for yourself, thing like a mowing or cleaning business, estimation is ninety to ninety five percent chance you'll be gone within a year. If you come into gyms, latest figures are it's around about ten and a half, eleven percent you'll mm. be gone. And some of that people actually goes have been successful but gone independent, which it does occasionally happen. Mm. So, but if it's it's not hundred percent, it's it's no guarantee some people do fail um, what we can say is that people fail statistically speaking tend to have a significantly lower star rating and more complaints than those who actually go on to succeed mm. but even even with that some people fail for no fault of their own there can be issues and, and and what i think about is some of these incredible franchisees in divisions like test and tag and they're all hanging on as far as i know but i mean you couldn't blame it if somebody actually failed because of this extraordinary oh, no fault really. of their own definitely no yeah. fault of their own so thanks for letting us know, Tim, and sorry to hear that. The David McDonald's gone, if Jim cloned himself, he would always be in breach. He'd always be in breach, is the comment from David. <laughs> David gazilla has gone, my dad, tell, my, my dad told me a story that he met you back in the early days in the 90s. I'm sure you would have had the beard then and yeah, I did. a little bit more on top. Then Christopher, now here we go, Christopher Temby. Hey, Jim, what are your opinions on the Australia's actions against the coronavirus? I think we're doing well. I think we're doing about as well as we can. A lot of Australian researchers are actually... Australia, Australia punches... We will punch well above our weight in scientific research. Mm. And, and we've got a number of different labs and universities working on this. I think we, we've done well. I honestly think... As, I cannot think of a country in the world that's done better than us, with the possible exception of someone like Taiwan or Singapore. Okay, there we go. So thanks for that question there. So David Malang's going, how can I get onto Jim's Online? What's the Jim's Online URL? Is it jimsonline.net? Jim's Online is, is a franchisee. Yeah. Is this a franchisee? Yeah, franchisees put this in it, yeah. 
If you've got issues with it, just email infotech at gyms.net is the that's answer. That's totally how to get on. Gyms yeah. online is, is, is where you go in to put down your work requirements. You can't be ringing the call centre all the time. Well, at least you, you, don't, you can, but it's a lot easier to do it on yourself. And that gives you all kinds of information. You can do things like you can check your previous jobs. You can send out surveys to clients. Yeah. You can do all kinds of things on gyms online. But if you're having trouble with it, infotech at gyms.net, or there's a number there as well I can help you. Rory Green, is this, this black T-shirt online? No, this is not a black T-shirt. This is our sort of staff uniform for when we go out on the road and film commercials and stuff like that. So this one's not online. There is a white version on it available, but if you want, if you want something, let us know. Then someone's gone here. Let's keep going down here. Nicole Ray, how is your cleaning franchisees handling social distancing within domestic cleaning? It's a great question yeah. from Nicole. It's not actually difficult, um, Nicole, because because you, there's no real particular reason for you to be close to anybody, even in the same room as anybody else. So you go into the house. If, if people want to be extreme, be in the next room. Even talk by phone. You don't have to be close to anybody but but the great thing about doing the cleaning is that you're actually cleaning all the surfaces very thoroughly um wiping them down and, and getting rid of any possible cross infection within the well not any possible but re reducing the chance of cross infection within the the family for example they're doing some exciting stuff with services cleaning i know the video content's coming out really soon for that but i know they're doing some really exciting stuff and we've just released an easter commercial as well for them, so um, they have been. There are some many franchisees been affected, but they yeah. they don't need. Well, this, this is the strange thing about it. People sometimes think that cleaning is a is a is a threat, but in fact, there's a lot of people who are actually getting more cleaning done because they see the cleaning as a defence, mm. particularly yeah. because of the fact that the that the virus can can last on services. And so it, you wipe things down. It's the same thing too. When you when you like you go to the supermarket, they 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 spray and wipe down all the screen, everything every time you do it. Where I've been. Yeah, and it's all about reducing risk. We can't say mm. it categorically it's going to eliminate the risk fully, but it's definitely going to significantly reduce any risk to you. So, disinfectant specialised service which cleaning has now, which is available as well. Um, please take that. Other up. companies too, I think. Um, hazardous waste has got this process. Where hazardous they, material, maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where, they, where they, they're spraying it in the air and so forth. They've got this particular mist and stuff, right? Yeah. Process right. That, that helps to really really reduce the chance of infection yeah definitely so there's multiple divisions who are offering these services and there'll be mm. some more stuff around that so Trish me ask thanks to you and Joel agree to hear that it's heartening to hear so many franchisees looking out for each other cross divisionally at the moment it's yes it absolutely is, is. It's, it's a massive is. change it's from wonderful. a while ago isn't it probably yeah Look, most yeah. of the time I think people do. Uh, I, I generally, from what I generally hear, people wave to each other if you see somebody from a different division in the street. I know somebody's complained that, that somebody didn't wave back to them, but usually that's what happens because there is a sense of a family about gyms. And it's also a strong cultural thing. We like to use each other. You often hear this kind of stuff, which is great. Because mm. actually the great thing about using another gym to do a service, it's not just the fact that you're going to get good service. You might pay a little bit more than the independence, yes, but you get great service, it's guaranteed. But the nice thing about that too is don't you get someone to do a service for you and you have a bit of a chat to them and then you can start passing work back and forth. And those relationships can be very, very lucrative and valuable. So there's good reason for us to use each other. Yeah, it's great. You, you listen, to, you talk to some gyms franchisees every now and again, or I do what we do and they have their trees guy or they have their diggers guy. Hmm. They have their little network of gyms guys and then they can all work together, all girls, and all work together on one job. Um, David, da uh, David, don't worry, mate. I completely understand you there. Keep going here. Then Julio Madrino, hey, I need my, my trailer sticker maybe or something like that. Let us know. Julio from mowing. If you, if you want it, just, just email national at gyms.net. Email national at gyms.net. Yeah, or some, anything to do with trailer, please do that. All right, Susan Barnes, this is a good one. Our elderly clients don't do electronic banking and only want to pay by cash. One lady was offended when we put glove put on gloves to accept the cash. Sorry to hear <laughs> that, Susan. Ah, uh, I'd yeah. rather offend a client than put you at risk. That's all I can say. My, my franchisee's health is top priority. Mm. What what else can I say? Yeah, most elderly clients. I don't think it's. I don't think it's a very. I think what you can point out to them is that you're protecting them as well. Yeah, no, you're definitely doing the right things, putting on yes. gloves to take that. So, um, no, good job on doing that. But um, oh, yeah, that 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 would be a problem with older clients. They might want to do cash or check or something like that. So. That's quite interesting. Mm -hmm. Let's keep going down here as well. So from a staffer, hey guys, I've applied on Jim's Facebook for getting started as a painter, but no one contacts me on how to do that. I don't know if that's either a franchise inquiry or for a job. If it's for a job, we don't have jobs, we only have franchises. So for that one, it's 131546.jims.net. Or you can email Jim your details, I guess, maybe. This is a guy... Well, we have a system called Jim's Plus where yeah. our surplus work can go to independent contractors, but that's only after our own people don't want it. And, yeah. And that's... Uh, quite competitive that's it and because then, they can actually bid up the price if they if they want to get it 
Yeah, and if, yes, make sure you complete the inquiry form. We'll make sure we look mm. after it, um, please, as well. But if it's for a job, we don't have jobs. We only do a franchise at the moment as well. David's going, always support the farmers because I'm a third-generation farmer. That's great. Absolutely, always support the farmers. Yeah, I, used to, I used to work on a farm once for about four months over in West Australia. Yeah, was, oh, you, was, you did like a, the, the Jimbaroo, whatever they're called. Yeah, the, I did. Yeah, yeah. I did. It, right. was, it was a very interesting experience. Like, like You never forget that kind of stuff, working on a farm. Was it a, was it a beef cattle farm or cattle yeah, station? Yeah, wool and wheat. Wool and wheat. Wool and wheat. Oh, wool and wheat farm in like the wheat belt there? Or? Yeah, just yeah. About, it's about 100, um, about 100 k's north of Perth. Oh, okay, right. I'll get you. But it, it was good, actually. I mean, they're, they're amazing people. I, I love I love the farm, but they're just they're, they're incredibly capable. They can do so many different jobs. They just do anything. They can, they, it's mechanical or fencing or dealing with animals or chopping down trees. They are so multi-skilled. It's a 24-hour job. And I think farmers, they've done... I remember seeing the paper once. They're the lowest paid people when you look at the hours they put in. It's like a dollar something or $2 something an hour. They're very asset rich, though. A lot of farmers cry poor, and I know that because my uncle's always saying they're crying poor. They're very asset rich, but generally cash flow and that is the Interesting thing, very when, hard many thing. years ago when I was trying to get a project through local council up in Alexandria Shire, mm. I actually went and personally spoke to the nine councillors who had a range of... of um, and just, just my initial impression is that the, the farmers are the ones that I liked, immediately liked the most. And the only one I really didn't like was the lawyer. Oh, that'd be, <laughs> that'd be <laughs> Which right. Which is interesting. <laughs> But that, which is unfair because because our lawyer, for example, Harpreet's the loveliest lady in the world, so it's not, not a fair statement. But mm. I just think farmers are, are good people. Oh, they are really good people. They are really good in people. In general, I'm sure there's some rotten ones out there. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Denise Taylor, we even passed a few jobs to carpet cleaning and pressure cleaning. That's great, Denise. Yes. So that's yeah, really good, good to hear. Mm. Oh, sorry, Denise was clean division. So first week clean division. Wow. So that's good to hear. You're that is, that that's is, really great. That is a great start. It, it can work. It, it's one, of the, one of the greatest things about gyms is this network of information. You've got, you've got 4,000 odd people all working together sharing ideas and somebody gets a great idea and they pass it around and other people try it. Mm. This one works for my clients. Okay, let's other people try it. We've got this, this huge network of, of data going back and forth. What's the best way to do everything? And we change what we do a lot, actually. We're always changing what we do at National because we get feedback from somebody. Hey, this is working better, so let's try it that way. Yeah, I'm glad to hear that, Denise, as well. It's awesome to hear that in this time. Con Sonis has gone, how far is the, from Jim's mowing, how far is the Jim's jobs overhaul going? How far away? Within a week, week and a half. Week and a half? Okay. Well, that's what Liv told me. I mean, I don't know right. what they told me, but, but they've, been, they've been testing it. They've actually had it. It's going for about a month, but they test it and they test it and they test it and they test it. And you, if you start using it and there's bugs in it, and even in, with all that, we'll probably find still some problems with it. But they just that's all they've been doing for the past month is just testing it. But it's yeah. very close. That's really good. So a week and a half, couple of weeks con, and then um, it's going to be awesome, actually, and let the feedback to obviously to Jim and Infotech know. Jim's jobs is going to be fantastic. Jim's jobs will be revolutionary, especially after you make the, the future changes. You know, things like being able to market to your clients, remind yourself about jobs that you want to call back to, and automatically sending things out and automatically following up um, email quotes with texts and reminding you that you haven't called somebody back and actually setting an appointment having it texted to the client. There's a massive thing that's going to be able to make your business more effective. Now, is that going to be the mobile app on Android and, and the Mobile, iPhone? Android and Apple. Apple. Right? Okay, so the mobile app, um, Apple and Android. Yeah, everything from your business, you should be, you're on for this. Great. And I know that's been done. It's been built, the whole process has been built with actual franchisees, right? Yeah. Knowing franchisees. Cleaning, Constant fencing. feedback. It's yeah. based on Jim's jobs, the original, the, the, the old PC version, yeah. which has always been very popular. No matter how much we try to get them on a different platform, people could say Jim's jobs is so easy to use. So the, the whole concept is to take that really, really easy to use, just jump in and try it, and it works magically and make it mobile and modern and do all these extra stuff. But two weeks, I reckon. I'm, I'm excited myself, Con, to see this because I've been here <laughs> for ages and I'm sure everyone has as well. So we can't wait to see it and we're going to do a bit of a two weeks' time, a yeah. week and a half. Well, yeah. you can have a look at it yourself. Oh, well, I'm going to be downloading it. Don't worry about that. I can't wait to um, yeah. can't wait to see it and get it out there. Jason Pollock, I know everyone has been impacted by the current situation in some way. There's been a lot of talk about stresses and impacts on franchisees in this situation. I want to do a shout out to all the franchisors who are also currently impacted by the situation at the moment, not only financial but mentally, as mm. we are looking out for all the franchisees regionally, making sure they get through every day, which takes a toll on itself, and that's true. I'm, look, I feel very proud of, of what so many franchisors have done. I get I get emails all the time. I mean, when you say I don't I don't get any good, I get a lot of good news too. Actually, people mm. often write to me when I write my one month letter or my one year, and all these kind of things, or when I ring somebody up anniversary. What I get told again and again is how fantastic the franchisors are, how they're always there, they're always ready, and they're always helpful. Um, 
I get a really, really good response. I always copy the franchise source to let them know what a great job they're doing. Yeah, that's really good to hear. And thanks for letting us know that, Jason. Jason's a pool care franchise. Oh, and he would definitely know. I'm sure he's supporting his franchise as best he can. Sydney agrees he's going to stay safe in, ha- in, in this hazardous time, absolutely. Yes. Peter Mann from NZ. Let us know you're going to NZ because there's a lockdown. Peter Mann's a test and tag. Over there, franchise all good evening, Jim and Joel. So thanks for watching, Peter, in the comment. I think it's the first time I've seen you comment on this one, so it's awesome. Have you on board? Denise, Ta- Denise Taylor, we got our first sanitation job today, which we're doing tomorrow. Jim's really? cleaning his sanitation, which is awesome. Yes, and then, I hope a lot more of this kind of thing too. Then Nigel's gone difficult times in NZ with the four-week lockdown. How many weeks lockdown has NZ been done now? Is it one week, two weeks? Or? I think it's due to come back on the 23rd or 24th. Yeah. But, but we don't know what's going to happen, whether they'll release them and allow them to go out and start mowing lawns and stuff again. I don't know. Let us know what's happening with that one, Nigel yeah. and Peter. Like, I want to know just are people, like, what's, are people defying the rules over there or what's happening as well? Like, I'd just love to know how it's working socially over there. What's the impact? The, the, the feedback I get is that they're, they're supporting their government in this, but arguments with them. I, I said it's a bit extreme and they said, no, no, we're doing the right thing. So mm. I, mean, I, I can't argue with that. Then Malcolm's got another five-star stickers for 2019 available for NZ. Actually, we're, we're changing them to be just five without any date on them. We figure if, you, if you've got five stars, you're not going to fall down. In fact, people very rarely do. If anything, they tend to improve. But we could send one over to them, couldn't we? The 2019 one to Malcolm, a five-star one? We'd have some available, wouldn't we? No, what I'm saying is that right. the ones we're sending now, yeah, yeah. you know that. Yeah. There's no there's no date on them. Right. It's simply five-star franchises. Okay, so we just give them and a 5 Once you've star. got it, you just put it on your trailer and it stays there. You don't have to update it every year. All right, so Malcolm, if you do want one of those, um, national.gyms.net, and we'll post one out to you. Or, or, or two, actually. You'll need one from... Oh, sorry, yeah. You'll need one. He's testing tax. You'll need one from either side. Absolutely, on the, on the, on the dual cab there. Glenn Sharp, we can see your question. You put a bit more in there, please, Glenn. Um, with that one, sorry. Wes and Leanne, what's what's up, Jim and Joel? Hello from Melbourne. G'day there, Wes. Ross Harper, in regards to disinfecting, you can't just spray and wipe as the chemical needs time to kill the bacteria. Nobody seems to talk about it and you see coals, etc. Just spraying and wiping. That's an interesting one. Ross Harper, cleaning division. Yes. So he's saying when you okay. go in there, go and bang in there, it needs time to... It, look, it does, but then again, when you're in a supermarket queue, it's probably better than nothing. Because you can't, you can't say to the next person, "Hey, wait ten minutes before you can use the um, the lockout." Obviously, in a normal situation. Well, what type of well, Ross? What effect would it have? Let's say if it doesn't do its job, would it reduce it by twenty percent, or what, what's the sort of effect you would have on it? I would have thought well, though that if you spray and wipe, you actually what you're doing is you're wiping it over the surface thoroughly. You're going to leave a thin veneer on the surface. It's not, it's not going to be dry. It's not as though you get a cloth and burnish it. You actually it's like when you get a dish cloth, dish mop, mm. and you wipe a bench. It's still wet. It's just you clean anything off it. I'd also say for consumer confidence in there as well. If they see them doing that, probably puts their mind just at a little bit more ease yeah. than what it is as well. It's pretty hazardous going to the supermarket now. There's no way you can both do the. Social, not really. I don't think anyone can really do it in there, except for the line. They have their spaces, but if you're walking around the aisles and stuff, I know people definitely aren't doing it. So I don't know. I, I tend to, I tend to do it. I'll, I'll, I'll if, if there's too many people <laughs> in, a, in a one particular aisle, I'll, I'll go to the next aisle. There you go. You don't, you don't get too close to people unless you go at a crowded time. Then Darren, Do- Darren, they reckon actually tomorrow Thursday because it's the it's the day before the Easter weekend. It's not a good time to go to the supermarket because yep. um, they'll be likely they might make you queue up outside. It's not having too many people inside at one time. That's it. So some person, so Jake's telling me that I'm missing some comments. I'm trying to see if you comment in a row. It's just what's showing in my window. So there might be some lags. I'm not ignoring your comment at all. I just can't see it in my live window in real time, and we can bank him up for next week as well. So let's keep going on here. So Darren Doyle's gone. Hello, Joel and Jim. How are you both doing? Jim's obviously doing well. I'm doing a bit well. Had a bit of a bad day actually, but it's all good. It's going to get better now. Um, let's keep going on here. Nathan Anderson, is there a, is there a franchisee up in is it Wungara? Is there a Wungara New South Wales franchisee? I wouldn't know. Don't know where that area is, but I'd say Jim's is everywhere, so there might be. Would not know. Then Paul King's gone. Which division? Mowing. All right, Paul King's on it. On Twitter. If you're forest. interested in getting a service done, well, then you can you can actually just go to one three one five four six and 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 ask them. That's it. And then Glenn Sharp's son is jumping on. We've got a 10-year-old son jumping on, which is great. I think Glenn's a um, non-gym. He's an independent mowing contractor. Okay. And he's saying some really good stuff, which is awesome. Then Paul King's helped out that guy who left the comments, which is great. Actually, it's in Paul King's region. So there we go. So the person who asked if we have someone there, Paul King's onto the case. Call Paul. He's a good fella. 131546, and he will talk to you. He's a gun, actually, so he'll give you everything you need to know. Darren Doyle, how far away is Jim's Monopoly? Now, Jim's Monopoly was supposed to be <laughs> end of the month. Due to COVID-19, it's been delayed around a month or 30 more days. So, End of which month? End of May, or before end of May. Uh, 
just because of the whole thing. However, we have seen all the prototypes of the pieces, Jim has seen them, mm -hmm. with the um, cards and all that sort of stuff. So it's there. The, the little green and red gyms yes, instead of your houses and your hotels. Yeah, so it's that one behind us and um, it's going to be quite cool. So maybe gra grab a copy, but we're going to probably release some more stuff about that during the week. Um, end of May or hopefully early than the end of May will be available. The only thing about those little gym jimbos is that they're all one colour. So yes. You might want to actually get a little bit of you know poster paint and paint the beard or something like that to make it to make it more. But anyway, that's. Okay, so here's a question from Glenn Sharp's son, who's ten, which is great. Uh, my dad owns lawn, the lawn, Doctor Camden. I'm so proud of my daddy, but he's starting to slow up with his customers. How can I help dad? Would you want to help him in the first place, which is great. <laughs> well, how can it, yeah, how can you help we have this system called Gyms Plus, which means if our people can't cope with the work, um, we can actually pass it out to independents like your dad. So that's that's a, a possibility. It's only if our guys can't handle it, but we, we knock back tens of thousands of jobs a year in the mowing division, so sometimes we just can't cope with the work. Um, your dad will have to be he'll, be, he'll be surveyed and everything else too. So if he doesn't do a good job, well, he won't get any more work. But, but if he does a good job, then he's welcome to take the stuff we can't handle. Jo join a lot of Facebook groups in your area too. Yeah. There's heaps of Facebook community groups, mar Facebook marketplace. Just take a picture of yourself and put yourself on there with a price. And the other thing too yeah. is if your dad um, starts taking work from us and really likes it, he might be able to become, want to become a franchise himself, which quite often happens. Now, Glenn's been watching a lot actually. So um, he's yeah. been watching a lot, Glenn. Um, we sent him a book, I think, as well signed. So... Yeah, if you, read, if you read my book the, um, about how I started the whole thing, there's a, there's a good bit of practical advice how you start a mowing business and end up, you know, doing all right. Thanks for that one, Braden. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. Then Con's saying, can't wait. He's saying it's been a long road. 100% it's been a long road. And he's saying, will it handle franchises with staff? That's a good question. Will which? Will the Jim's Jobs app handle franchises with staff? So with some systems, Jim, you can allocate work hurdles or whatever to someone and it pings their phone and all that sort of stuff. So... Does it cold handle multiple I, users? I am not sure. Not it, sure. It, it will with time. It, it's actually we've had a mammoth effort to get it to get it um, ready to the stage we're at now. But it doesn't stop then. We're actually continuing to develop it as time goes by. Yeah. So th yeah, that's a good point, Con. So we, we have to we, think. We wanted it to yeah. be something that would would handle what competitive systems like um, Formatize do. That was the basic idea to have it done at that stage. But we're going to continue developing it. It'll also be um, improve for certain different divisions which have slightly different needs for example they could already do it we're not we're not 100 percent sure but i would say it wouldn't be too hard to add an extra user or whatever and have multiple accounts for the same franchisee i don't know yeah we'll get on we'll get back to the one on con um next week we'll find out for you just if, in case if Kirsten. you're in if you're uh, presuming you're jim's person yeah it's jim's mind franchisee yeah just um, um just contact um Infotech at gyms.net. Infotech at gyms.net. And, and just ask yeah. them what the story is. Con's been around for years. I reckon I know. I know who Con is. So, been around for years with many staff, which is great. Justin Kerslake's gone, sending a shout out to the mowing franchisee Joel from Canberra. He's a legend and really helped me out. Awesome. Thanks for that comment, Justin. We read it at the start as well. We got your email during the week and we really appreciate that positive news. Okay, here we go. Nathan Anderson, oh, I think I went across to the road from my house to talk to the franchisor and he messaged you with my number. So, some stuff going on there. Here we go. Matthew Dwyer. Hi Jim and Joel, I also have a spare mower, trimmer and vac blower available to loan to a franchisee from other divisions in northern Melbourne if they want to take on unservice work. So there's another offer All right. from a northern <coughs> uh, northern Melbourne franchisee, which is Matthew. So really appreciate that, Matthew. That's great, Matthew. Really appreciate it. That's really nice. So here we go, one from Jason Smith in uh, South Australia. Um, they're, they're regionals. We've had a couple of franchisees share up to nine jobs with other franchisees that have slowed down. We are attempting to be as collaborative as we can. Excellent. That's awesome, and really thanks for letting us know and watching as well. Then I we think it's, it's, it's a wonderful thing. It's, it's, it's helping people is important financially, but I think from a moral point of view too, there's a just sense of, of fear and of you know, demoralization. Mm. And if we, can, if we can support each other, be part of our family and, and look out for each other, that's a, that's a great feeling. And, and that's often the sense, actually. Sometimes it's the, it's the psychological, it's the stress that gets people more than the actual financial repercussions. Yeah, so thoughts, you know, thoughts are thoughts and facts are facts. And in, in these times, your thoughts can run wild with sort of all these mm. things. Then Gas Hitman's gone, Jim, thanks for the advice Sunday week. I've taken on mowing as suggested by you and have boosted my business sales exponentially. Cheers, wow. Gary, from Jim's Handyman on the Gold Coast. Thank you. That's Oh, yes, yeah, you're the guy that um, he's, he's, on the north, he's on the north end of it. I was, actually, yeah. I was looking it up, Gary. I was trying to find out who you were to go back and ask you how it went. <laughs> Yep. But that, that's fantastic. That's good. We had, a, we had a long conversation. We figured out that he was from the north end of the Gold Coast and he could easily cover Brisbane. So I set him up for a whole lot of those handyman work. And that's, that's fantastic. 
But for, for, for the uh, mowing work coming in. And I'll help you get through this time. And obviously, once it goes back to hopefully a bit more normality, um, full and handy work, man work again, away you go. Yes. So Polozoi's gone. Good evening, Jim and Joss. Okay, Polozoi, he's fencing franchisee. Now, here we go down. I just want to go, blah, 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 blah. So D- Dougal's gone. Is there a guy who mows lawns in Swan View that needs help with lawn mowing? We'd love to mow to move to Swan View. A lot of franchisees do need workers. Yeah, you um, can actually, if you contact 131546 and just say you're interested in a job, there's, yes. there's a... There's, there's a list a, of register, yeah. There's a list of register, yeah. and it'll go to the local people who are interested in employing workers. A lot of our French, even, even in this... Even though it seems like we're in some sort of recession, it's quite surprising that people are still taking on workers because so many are busy, particularly in divisions like mowing. Mm. I know one particular guy had, um, had two teams of three workers I was speaking to. Two teams of three workers still. That's great. Still, and doing a lot that's, of commercial projects and stuff. And he, that's fantastic. He was actually given the guidance that he wasn't allowed to have three on site. And so that's how I know about this thing. And I said, I looked it up and I said, no, you can have three on site. Mm. You might want to try and only have two in the car. That's, there's some doubt about that, but you can definitely have more than two on site. That's fantastic. We've got 120 people watching now, which is great. So make sure you, you smash the like button or some engagement and leave your comments. I'm not ignoring the comments I'm missing too. I just can't see them in my view here. Jim's mowing Melbourne out of North West and Vic is tuning in, which is John Formosa. So g'day, John. So thanks for tuning in saying g'day. Appreciate your support. All right, let's keep going down here now. This is a manual. So a manual's from Test and Tag. This was one who was struggling in Test and Tag last yeah. week. Okay. So let's read this one out and see who's going. Hey guys, I started receiving texts today regarding Chris Divisional work. If I see something that I think I'm capable of doing, do I ring the call centre to accept the job? I'm not sure how it works and also how would I quote? Okay, Emmanuel, first of all, you have to be down for the service or you can't get it. But what you can do is you can contact myself, jim at jims.net, and put yourself down for the service, which, which we won't do for things like fencing, and then, and then you can actually go and ring the client and take the job. Now, he's not sure about how to quote for it as well. That's an interesting one. They're not sure how to quote. Look, there's a basic guideline. You should be able to make, as a reasonably competent operator, 60 bucks an hour. If you think of it in those terms, we're not, we're not workers working for $25 an hour. Um, <clears throat> at the same time, you know, you can quote more than that if you wish. But as a reasonable guide, 60 bucks an hour. So you figure out how long it's going to take and, and work on your early rate. Yeah, there's, um, there's definitely, and maybe if you... The other thing you can do too is if you wish... Um, I had a um, somebody from West Australia who wanted to know how much to charge for gutters. This was a non-mowing guy. So what I actually did was I got a list of the franchisees in his area, in his region of, of Perth where he is, and I sent him the list with the names and the phone numbers, and I said, bring these guys and ask them. Right, so you can get that list and maybe just ask a few for well, some You can just ring up and ask them, what do you charge for gutters? Explain who it is. The good thing about this, of course, is that, is that it's a way of creating bonds across different divisions. Right. That's why I wanted to do that because, you know, you might have a chat with someone, you get to know them and you start passing work back and forth. You might say, well, I've got some, I think he was a handyman or something like uh, that. Emmanuel's test and tag. No, no, this was a oh, guy so in Perth I was right. I'm talking about. Okay. And I was saying, if you if you get to know the other franchisees in your, in your regional area, then you might be able to establish a relationship with them and refer work back and forth. There we go. So Paul Wick's gone, any new Jim's businesses in the pipeline? Question mark. Well, the latest one's Home Fresh, which is which is killing it. Um, Home Fresh doesn't have it doesn't have any room to move at the moment. We're just going berserk. So yeah, that's, that's the trouble. They're so busy. Nothing, nothing, nothing due to start up in the near future. That's it, David. Dave, Dave Bryan. Hey, Joe. Any chance of a signed Jim's book? It depends which one. Which if you want the green one or blue one, let me know, David. But absolutely, because you are so nicely, we can do it. Then let's keep going down here. Um, hi, Jim. If you, ha- I have one question. Are you going to do the fruit and veg delivery if you need anything help? Uh, because I'm helping Vic. Um, Home Fresh, David. Email Home Fresh. They're the ones. Contact them. They will help you out with everything you need. Yeah. Um, or Jim can pass details and they're, on. And they're, and they're great stuff too. We've been ordering it from the office and probably basically closed down. And it's really, really good quality stuff. I actually asked um, Shankar. I said, "Why, why are people coming to you instead of Woolworths?" And he just simply he said, "It's the quality of the product." Yeah, that's it, right. it is. Yeah. I can vouch for that. It's very, very good stuff, and the staff here love it. That's the same to my comment when I first had it, especially with the banana. I like a good banana, and then um, they're really, really nice. So that's definitely the quality of product is superb. We think it's going to be a great help to the division because people, once they get used to ordering this stuff, they they're not going to go back. They, they, a lot of people will not go back to the supermarket. They'll actually keep on having this service. But it works great for other divisions. If you have that Jim's Home Fresh box sitting there and you need something done in your house. I'm going to get Jim's to do this. It just puts Jim's in the forefront of the mind. So anytime a Jim does a good job or leaves a card or leaves a bear in the house, mm. it's all about that branding everywhere, seeing Jim's everywhere. Glenn Sharp's gone, thank you guys. My dad watches you guys and gets me to watch with him. That's cool. 10-year-old 10 year, 10 year old 
son and Glenn watch every week. That's really cool. Well, I've got a 10-year-old son, Aaron, who's, who's actually, he's more interested in science than business as it happens, but uh, he's, he's a great kid. So I hope, I'm sure you are too. Great. It's, it's nice to you to support your father and get on with him too. That's, yeah, it's that's really, really good to hear. Really, really Aaron nice. and I are very close. Really, really nice. Craig Watson, hi. It's Craig from Jim's Mowing Denham Court. Uh, I helped out at Jim's Mowing today as he, as he blew up his rider mower or blew up his mower and I stopped out to help him out today in Ingleburn. That's great to hear. Wonderful. Well done. Sorry to hear that mower blew up. It's not a, not a good, nice thing to happen mm-hmm. to you. And then here we go. Glenn Sharp, can you please have someone call me tomorrow in regards to what you guys said before? Once again, thank you. Is that regards to a franchise inquiry or something, Glenn? I don't know. Leave us know. Glenn, Glenn, just email jim at jims.net and I'll get back to you. There we go. So there we go. Con Sonus, didn't know about the register. I tried to find staff for the last six months. This game would be different now. Yeah, we, it was created out of need. We're getting smashed with it all the time. So we created an Excel mm. sheet or something like that, Con. I know Con's, Con must have a big crew, I think. So Con's obviously looking out for workers all the time. I know a lot of you are looking yeah. for good workers. It's actually, in fact, the, the main reason why franchisees don't expand is it's not usually lack of work. It's usually they just can't find good workers. So if you've got a good work ethic and, and so forth, it's, it's great. And a lot of them, actually, they, they can become team leaders. They work alongside and become team leaders. Quite often, they buy franchises in the end when they see the money that's been made. That's it. And Dougal's gone there. Just call Dougal. Call 131546. Put your name in the register. If there's people in the Perth area, yes. and they'll, they can look and call you. But you've put your details there, which is great. Uh, Paul Sandals, any chance the Monopoly board will be ready soon? Bit of fun in isolation. My order is already in. Paul was great. Paul did the pre-order. Uh, it's going to be a bit delayed, Paul, due to COVID, unfortunately. I wish it was. It'd be bloody great to have now. It would have been the perfect timing. Seeing you, um, you're stuck with why not play Jim's Monopoly? Yeah. <laughs> I, know. <laughs> I know. Look, Paul's great. You've done a pre-order. So, um, yeah, I'm, we're trying to get it. May, May is when we're going to try and rush it all. We'll do an email if there's going to be any more real delays to it. Um, here we go. Kyle, Mark, what is your favourite day of the week, Jim? That's the first prime question of that one. I've never had that one before. <laughs> Normally Sunday. Cause I, I love church. I just Sunday. It's, it's a great thing. I know it sounds people don't think of church as being, but, but charismatics are very, uh, we're very. It's a very uplifting sort of experience. So I love Sunday. I, I really miss it actually. I just can't. It's the hardest thing. To oh, take you can't away. do the gatherings anymore, can you? Mm-hmm. You can't do the gatherings anymore, can you? No. Um, you can watch things online. Like a live it's stream. Not, stuff, it's yeah. not quite the same thing. Yeah, there we go. Jay, Jay Wagner, hi guys, I'm Jim's Treats Brisbane, only guy up here, one lead for the week, doing my best to be proactive advertising ETC, but it's dead, what are my options, bearing in mind my large running costs, running trucks and a chipper, etc. Just just look to what else you can do, cross-divisional is a good thing. We're still knocking back tens of thousands of leads. I mean, in the last week, month in, Brisbane, in, in Perth alone, we knocked back like over 1,100 leads. It's, it's just, there's work around, be prepared to be flexible. And you'd have a lot of skills, obviously, Jay, to do that sort of stuff just to get you by anyway. For example, you, you'd obviously be you'd obviously be very confident working with heights. Look at guttering jobs. Mm. Guttering is very lucrative. You know, I don't. Somebody's asking me what they charge, but as far as I know, it's like 120 bucks for a single and 250 bucks for a double story, and that's like an hour's work. Mm. So if if you can do trees, why not clear gutters at the same time? And Paul Sandals saying at the moment supports taking up. I think he's replying to Haydar. I didn't see Haydar's comments. So sorry, we wasn't ignoring it. Support taking up three times as much time as well. Mm. He's saying a lot, lot more. Obviously, there's a lot more support they need now, uh, franchisees. So Zors are obviously flat out as well. Um, and then Jay Janelle's gone. Jay, look at the cross divisional work to help, which is what Jim's answer. Dave McDonald, how do you think the schools and parents will cope with homeschooling? We've had very little contact from our schools, primary and secondary. Lots of inquiries to fix the internet. Yes, well, it's going to be a challenge. Next week, we've got uh, <laughs> I've got two kids at home, quite likely. Right. So we're actually um, preparing to do a bit of homeschooling and stuff, which is easy enough because my wife and I both work from home, but it's a lot more challenge for other people. What has your school advised you, your school, to do? Are they providing online learning or they yeah. give you they, yeah. Yeah, online logins and all that sort of stuff? Yeah, our kids go to a, um, a small Christian school, so it's it's they're, they're very well set up for this kind of stuff. Yeah, I think David's in a regional area in Horsham, so... Um, yes, and I can imagine you have a lot of inquiries to fix the internet. There's a lot, a lot of people using it at the moment. It sort of depends on 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 where your kid is. I mean, it, 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 the hardest for, for kids who are in say year eleven or year twelve, especially when their education is so important, that's really a challenge. Mm. When you've got somebody like in, in, in ten years old, um, well, my my Aaron reads New Scientist and talks about that, so I think he gets a pretty good education from, from everyday life. So I'm not too worried about him. We'll still keep on giving him work and stuff. Mm. And Haydar's comments here has gone, a shout out to our franchisors who have stepped up and working crazy hours supporting franchisees in these different times. Yes. Great to have you on a team. And that's very important to point out. Um, franchisors are and that, absolutely... And, and franchisees, let, let them know you appreciate them too. I, I think often it's a very hard job and sometimes people will only, franchisees will complain and, and a franchisor gets battered by this. If you can just sometimes tell them how much you appreciate what they do, 
it's it, it makes a lot of difference. Yeah, I think yeah, I think people are always going to send negative comments more than positive stuff as well. So if you are a franchisee, mm-hmm. also go on both ways. It's maybe a positive, just saying, I know this times, but I, I can, know you're doing all what you can. I can tell you, look, I can tell you, the high point of my career is is not so much when I look at my bank balance, which isn't going up much anyway. <laughs> <laughs> But it's, it's just getting some some appreciation from a franchisee and saying something like, I just wish I'd done this years ago and it's fantastic and I, I love what I'm doing so much and I love gyms. I mean, that to me is an incredible boost. And, and I think franchisors feel the same way because the great majority of franchisors are very decent, caring people and they really, really care about franchisees and want you to do well. And they put a lot of, a lot of, a lot of themselves into this. Yeah, it's a very stressful time for everyone. Just have a bit of empathy. I think the world world needs a lot more empathy than aggression. Yeah. So try and be a bit more positive if you can. Um, but if they're, if they're not doing the job as well, that's fair play. But most franchisors are doing a cracking job at the moment. Especially especially these days. When we started many years ago, when we started putting some surveys and stuff into place, we had a lot. We had more cases of franchisors who weren't doing particularly well. But these days, with the kind of systems we've got in place. Franchisors, on the whole, do very, very well. We get more and more diamond franchisors every year, the ones who are absolutely at the peak level. Well, I talk to a lot of franchisees with the video stuff a lot, and the first thing I say, is, How, how's your franchise or who's your franchise? And I always say, oh, he's great. Mm. I've never, or her, she's great. I've never heard I hear that so anyone often. say anything else. Yes. So Luke O'Neill's going, hi, Joe. I've received a lead through a friend for a small tree job in Brizzy, but I'm on the Sunshine Coast. If you'd like to send me a message, I can send you the details. How good's that? Luke's Jim's mowing franchisee, offering to send a lead to a Brizzy Trees franchisee in the live feed. So it's creating work, mm. which is really good. Malcolm Bradley, had a few comments about my Jim's test and tag teddy bear as I have one sitting on my dash of my truck. Everyone is into the spotting the teddy bears during the lockdown. Yeah, the teddy bears are great. We've had Tim, he took them for real estate agents. You've got some Malcolm, which is awesome. Real st- if you are, post this whole thing. Go into your real estate agents and give them these bears or give something, get in there, something to remember you and get you the job next time. Con Sonus has gone thinking further Thinking further ahead, if we go into stage four lockdown or worse, would some of our services be deemed essential? Good question. I don't think Australia is going to go into lockdown. I, I think if anything, we're going to be starting to come out of it slightly come May. Honestly, I don't think from everything I've read about what the Prime Minister said, um, I can't see it happening. Yeah, but as to whether we can apply, the trouble is we're, we're too much of a niche. You don't even mention home services, which you think you would because there's hundreds of thousands of people, but they're not even thought about. The best guide you can usually do is something like construction. Yeah, not, tra- I keep saying trades, trades or something like that. Construction yeah. and trades. Yeah, that's right. So we, we, we more or less fit into construction, trade, those trades, those kinds of areas. Thing, yeah. So we'll, we can try. Um, but the trouble is... Uh, these times they get they just get flooded with so many applications and we can just try and try and try. I mean, one of the things I thought of is if they ever tried to lock us down, I would get every franchisee in Australia trying to get them to write to their MP and, and flood them with, with, and everybody from the industry to flood their MP and say something like, hey, you know, pool care, lawn mowing, trees, those kind of outdoor services are no risk to anybody, least of all to the person doing it. Mm. Let's not wreck the economy for the sake of, of no gain. And John Famos has gone, he got a cleaning price. Single story is about one, he's giving us some estimates, which is great, in full transparency. Single story, 160 to 220, and double story, $400 and upwards. He says, glad Jim's not quoting our jobs. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you what, for a job that typically takes, it typically takes no more than an hour, that's good money. I, I am job, absolutely yeah. flabbergasted that guttering jobs go unclaimed. That's such good money. And the thing about it too is it's not just a case that you do it once and then you ask the client, how often do you have your gutters cleared? And so it's better every six months, every year, whatever. So then you put it in your diary and you bring them back and you go again. I mean, goodness gracious. I mean, you could do six a day. And if you're charging, what did he say for double story? 400? 400 plus. 400 upward, that's just the starting price. So 400 <laughs> bucks, do six of them a day, which you could quite reasonably do. You're talking about $2,500 a day. I'm in the wrong Something like $12,000 a week, yeah. which is like $600,000 a year. And people say no to this job. That is lunatic. Yeah, I'm in the wrong Mind gig. Mind you, I don't think everybody charges as much as you, I'm sorry to say. <laughs> no, I'm in the wrong gig. I'm in definitely in the wrong gig. Craig Watson, how far do we go before see Gems Job going being ready? A couple of weeks. Craig was the was yeah. the announcement. There'll be a big announcement as well. Uh, yeah, I've been told within a week or a week or two. 
Yeah, and then here we go, John Formosa. Uh, Ray. Ray says it takes longer than an hour, so there's a bit of conjecture about how long it could take to do a single-story gutter. Well, I don't know. I used to do them all the time. Awesome, and, 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 and And three-quarters of an hour was a, was a decent single-story gutter. I, I don't know but what, what sort of system you use. Cool, depends. It depends on the, on the person. And, Mind you, I didn't, use, I, I didn't use a harness in those, so I used to get up on the roof and a ladder and just sit and put foot in the gutter. Massive risk, massive risk. Obviously now harnesses, certificates, all that sort of stuff. I know. Some of the stuff that I used to do when I was mowing contract... <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't fly these days. We're not going to talk about it. No way. We would, we would no. encourage people not to act in such a way. I had some near misses too. There we go there. So keep going down here, which is great. Dave McDonald's going, our curve is already flattening. Won't be long till there'll be very few new cases per day in Oz. Yeah. Absolutely hope so, you know. And definitely that's what we need, especially for the franchisees in the, who have been really affected, like test and tag. And I know building inspections are away as well. So that's the... Um, I think test and tag will spring back because people people are not going to... They might not have it done now, but they're going to need it some time. So what's going to happen when we start to come out of this thing, there'll be a whole surge of work to go through. Then Glenn's gone, can you have the other book? Absolutely, Glenn. You can have the um, Every Customer's a Fan one. That's no problem. That costs us nothing, that one. So that's all good. Um, it really costs us nothing. Well, it costs us a little bit. It costs us the postage. So that's all right. Plus you use signature as well. We no, charge we have, 20 we have, bucks. We have to print them. They don't they're not, they're not cost nothing. Well, it costs minimal. It's not as much as the green one. We'll the green one we have to buy from the publisher. Correct. He's got the green one. So I know we'll give you the other one. No problem at all. Jay Wagner's gone. He doesn't cover my costs, though. Cross Divisions is backpedaling when you have 150 k worth of gear. Sitting in your driveway, then go out and clean a gutter that takes a minimum of two hours and travel to make hopefully 200 bucks. How backwards is that, he's saying? Well, it's backwards. Well, if, it's certainly backwards if you can do jobs in your own division, but I would say 200 bucks is slightly better than zero. Well, John, well, John for most, is figures quoting if it's two story, because you'd be here, Joe would be over, like, have all the qualifications you know, mm. with all the climbing. So it, it is a frustrating situation. Joe, we can't, as well. we can't we do it better, but if you're sitting at home, by virtue of sitting at home, you're not going to actually say to the finance company, "Oh, by the way, you don't charge me because I'm not using your gear." You're going to have to pay the, the you're going to have to pay for it. Mm. You're going to have to pay the leasing costs or the interest costs or whatever it is. So, to me, I'd, if I was you, I'd rather be out there making a few hundred bucks a day than sitting at home and doing nothing. Saying that some financiers, some finance companies, they were offering relief as well. Just to say that, just in case, to check out if that is fine. Same, but, a few hundred yeah. bucks a day extra would, would be would be better than nothing, in my mm. view. It definitely it doesn't solve your problem, and I'm not saying it does. I'm just saying it's better than nothing. And because of your experience, you'd be so quick at it, I reckon you'd be able to whip through heaps as well, really safely as well. Then he's saying here, John Formos has gone, you're getting too excited about the comments with the, the money stuff. I think it was probably me saying, I didn't know how much money they could make with that. And then Glenn Sharp's gone. I used to his. love gutter clearing. In fact, towards the end of my own career, I didn't. I, that, that was the jobs that I would take by preference, gutter clearing and slashing blocks. I used to charge 90 bucks to splash a block, which took me half an hour with my big... And what year was that? Splatter. That was, well, 1988 was when I stopped. Gee whiz, that was when I was born. So what... what, what uh, so what, oh, $90 flashing? for splashing a block, which took me half... I used to love it because I loved this huge, self, you know, giant machine with all this power and stuff. I just... What's that calculate for inflation, you reckon, in today's money? If that's in 88, 90 bucks. What could you buy a house for in those days? Maybe $50,000? I mean, I mean, think of it in those terms. It's ripping money. It was good money. Yeah. It was good money. Absolutely ripping money. Then uh, Eric Jergens gone. I trust that Jim will be getting you an egg, Joel. I don't think Jim, Jim, Jim might be definitely getting me an egg. He might put an egg on my face or something like that. But that's that's it. Glenn Sharp's gone. Happy Easter to the Jim's group. So thanks, Glenn, and appreciate thanks, that man. as well. That's really nice. So Easter's an important time for Jim and his family. Then Nathan Lovell's gone. Do you have a favourite lawnmower, Jim? Well, I like the ego ones. The ego ones. Yeah, I haven't I haven't used it myself. But I just think that the, this, the battery power. I love the battery power. So the battery, any battery powered mower. Yeah, like I've got an AEG one like on my farm actually, yeah. which I use to cut the, the grass around the house. Um, but but I think I think I, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of, of batteries. I just think they're they're a fantastic achievement. And we've got this this trailer that they've done, which is uh, where you can actually power the the batteries as you go. Using, yeah, partly using solar power. We had to put that on. We had to put it on hold a bit, unfortunately, due to yeah, the COVID. With the um, in regards to the content of filming and seeing how showing customers how it's all green now and the noise reduction with the blowers and stuff like that, and we had to put that on hold. But we're going to ramp that back up again. But I think I think yeah. that's the way of the future. I think that's where we're heading towards um, is, is battery powered stuff, M much more than cars. Actually, cars are a, a lot harder, but to charge a lawnmower or a brush cutter. A battery while you're driving around is quite practical. No more noise complaints early in the morning as well. Yeah, and it's the Hopefully vibration it and, the, and, the, and the actual noise itself. Mm. I think one may, my hearing may be not quite perfect because um, I have a lot of in, in, very mild industrial deafness. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, it's not, that, it's not bad actually, not for my right. age, but, but all the same. Um, you know, so full safety gear includes covering your ears, um, earmuffs and so mm. forth. 
But it's also, if, you, if, you, if you're mowing lawns or using it, you, you want to listen to music or, in my case, talking books or something like that, it's, it's good. And if there's less noise, you can do that. And there's less vibration too, which is a big factor too. People can get RSI from the vibration of a lawnmower. I'd definitely prolong your career as, um, if, you, if you like doing it. People mm-hmm. have to retire because of RSI and all that sort of stuff earlier with the hedge trimmers and stuff as well. So it's definitely a lot lighter as well. That was the main benefit when we went through it. Constantus has gone, problem is that the community trans- transmission may be the next wave where it's not traceable. Yes. Which is what Con's saying. Absolutely, absolutely, that's a risk. Look, I don't think you can stop it completely. You can't stop everything. All you can do is, is just try and keep a lid on it. It's like, it's like if, you, if you let it go, you go like this, and then it's a huge rush, and that overwhelms the emergency rooms, and people die. That's mm-hmm. happening in New York now, where people are just dying in the, in the corridors and the hospitals because it's too much. Yeah, it's crazy. It's, or, it's or horrifying in, in, in Lombardy, for example. Yeah. But if you can actually spread it out a bit and keep it to the stage where everybody who needs emergency bed can get it, then you're not going to have as many deaths. And the people that do die from this tend to be those who wouldn't normally have a great life expectancy anyway. Mm. So it's, it's, it's sad, but it's not so bad. But when you get to the stage where people are dying who could have been saved, that, that's really hurtful. Mm. And Glenn Sharps, he's got the white book. So you haven't got the green one, Glenn. However, you watch with your son all the time. So we'll hook you up. That's uh, really nice to let us know as well. So we can do that. Then Con Theo's gone here as well. So we've got a few more questions, which is awesome. So I'm just trying to get on here as well. Scroll down. Sorry, sorry, people. One sec. Okay. So someone's responded here, which is great. Um, even though, actually, a former franchisor. Even though I'm no longer a franchisor on a franchisee, Jim is a great motivator and puts his heart and soul into Jim's. Good. Thank I, you for that. Jack didn't put the name on that one, so I can't give that person a shout out. So, all good. Then Jay Wagner's gone. Understandable. Always good to see you guys making everything positive, especially in these rough times. Jim, you are a good fella. Thank no you. No matter what Joel says about you. Especially <laughs> oh. I'm not around. That's right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Actually, just uh, speaking what you said yeah. before, too, yeah. I take great pride in our graduates. So when people join gyms and learn how to run a business, and they go off and do it independently and they're a success, often in a different field, of course, in a much larger business. I, I feel a tremendous sense of accomplishment from that, that, that somebody has come to us as a first stage into business, learnt what we had to offer, and then got on to doing very well. And there's a lot of people out there whose first step in business with the Jim's franchise who are now doing extraordinarily well. Oh, so there's a guy called Con Theo. Oh, Con Theodosu, I think his name is, from the Jim's cleaning group, I think, back in the day. Now yeah. I remember. I know most people's names, so I'm lucky. So that's great to hear that from Con, mm-hmm. a former franchisee and franchisor. And I think a good success story you always mention is Andrew McIntosh, yeah. who's one of your first franchisees. He's a multi-millionaire, I presume, now based on what you're telling me. And um, a lot of those business skills they learn, it's quite it's quite. Well, I know if you look at Fox mowing, Fox going around the place, that's actually from one of our... Phil, yeah. For, for Phil. Phil from, Morda. He's a franchisor yeah. who learned his trade from us. Mm. So, in fact, he's, he's now our... One he's of a our competitor, ma- yeah. He's a competitor. He's a good guy, though, Phil. I know yeah, Phil. Yeah, he is too. He's a good guy. He, did, yeah. he was a great franchisor. I learned a lot from myself. He was one of my first. And he created a lot of systems for yeah. gyms, which are still that's used right. today in the call centre, right? So the interesting get, thing yeah. is he's only got about, we think about as many franchisees as Fox as he used to have as a franchisor with us. But I guess the, <laughs> the advantage is he gets yeah. to keep all the money instead of splitting it with us, so that may be, may be a, an advantage. Nah, he's a good fella, Phil, and he's a good golfer as well. I uh, wish him well if he's watching. So what we'll do, Jim, is um, thanks to everyone who left comments tonight. There was around 230-something people, 300-something at one stage, which is awesome. So thanks for everyone. 123 comments on the Jim's Group feed. I'm sure there's other pages. We weren't ignoring them. Jake done a great job trying to filter them all through to me. And for the franchisees and franchisors, we'll, 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 the, the newsletter we sent out, the update of the crisis went pretty well. So we'll do another one next Tuesday and keep you up. Keep you posted. Yeah, so let's just make the, yeah. So you're going to get an email with a link in there. It's safe. If it comes from jim at jims.net, it is safe. The reason why we do that is because it's just easy for people to click out to YouTube as opposed to trying to watch it within their browser and some emails block it. But it is an official one from Jim if it comes from jims.net. And if you respond to the email, you can get to me straight away. That's exactly right. So thanks, everyone, and stay safe, and we'll see you again next Wednesday, and stay tuned for the update during the week. So thanks, guys.